Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Today is the 16th of December, 2019. Uh, glad to have you guys here. Welcome. Uh, listen, more and more, they're automating everything. Have you guys ever been on a telephone call, you know, and you got the automated operator on there? You know, you try and try, you push a bunch of numbers and try to get through to a real person. Why do you do that? Because the automated system won't handle handle the business that you have at hand. You've got something you want done. You know, it requires a person. Because a person has got a mind. The automated system, I mean, it just, okay, maybe it's run by one of these new quantum computers or whatever, you know, but it doesn't think. And it can't do your business properly and if a situation comes along it's not programmed into the system <clears throat> well you're messed up well you know they're doing this same thing with the uh, with all of the financials now they're switching them all over to computer and computers are running them and uh, let's take a look at this article let's get it started right here and let's take a look at this article from Zero Hedge. Profound shift is underway amongst investors. Morgan Stanley thinks 2020 will be the year of the quants. A profound shift is underway amongst investors. The significance of quants in our clients' investment process is clearly in the rise. Increasingly, they are implying, applying sophisticated quantitative techniques in investing analysis and alpha generation beyond pure quantitative or factor investing artificial intelligence AI and machine learning stand out amongst these techniques at Morgan Stanley's quantitative research and investment conferences weeks ago now they're putting computers in charge of the whole investment the whole all the markets and everything Computers are starting to run them bots, trading bots, you know, that that run things. And it's it's like that telephone, when you call up that telephone, you know, and you get that. Or have you guys ever filled out a form on the Internet, you know, and you're filling it all out. You get down to the part where you have to put in your zip code and the computer doesn't recognize your zip code and. The form just freezes on you. You go to en enter, you know, and it says put in a, a, a qualified zip code. And your zip code is qualified. And you're like, what the heck? You're like, and so you fill the form all out again a second time and hit the enter button. And it does the same thing over and over again. And you're like, you can't fill out the form. Whereas if you had a person on the other end, you know, they'd say, oh, well, you know, sure, enter that zip code. Fine, works person works computers don't work they could freeze all of our markets up with this change that they're making over to AI AI is all the rage AI you know they gotta have it just like all of these things that they're doing right now they're shifting us over into uh, a system that's totally dependent upon the internet the function uh, you know and I mean uh, you know, maybe it's the generation I grew up in, but we never trusted computers really fully, you know, and I'm worried that what could go wrong? That's what I'm worried about. What could go wrong? Let's take a look at the silver price today. We're up five cents. 16.97 for silver. We're a little bit on the high side of the range, though, but it's in a range right now that's running between six. 1885 and 1705. That's our range. And we're right in the smack dab in the middle of it. Let's take a look at gold. It's up a dollar eighty today. 1477. Now on gold, we're on the high side of the range, almost ready to break out, make a breakout uh, in gold. We're we're right on that high side. 1477 and the range for gold is around 1480 uh, to around no 1468 I should say 
to around 1478. And we've been breaking out of that 1478, moving to the upside, and we're close to it right now. Uh, so gold could break out a little bit and carry that silver up with it maybe later in the day if the dollar continues to drop. Got to watch that dollar. Cryptocurrency today. We're looking at 194.8 billion in cryptocurrency, 66.6% uh, .6 Bitcoin dominance, $7,164 for Bitcoin, Ethereum's 142, XRP is 21 cents, Bitcoin Cash is 207, Litecoin is 43.37, boy that's cheap. I'm going to tell you what, I think. Starting to look more and more like it to me that Bitcoin doesn't want to go any lower than than the prices it's at right now. It's kind of it's kind of down there and it's it's had its chance. It was like two hundred and three billion market cap on in the industry. It dropped down to like hundred and ninety two, you know. And we were all expect kind of expecting a, a maybe a drop or a rise in price, but we got our drop. It's like it's almost like it feels like it's starting to test its bottom now to me. That's, that's what I feel like it's doing, you know. And so I think it's testing the, testing the bottom. It's like dipping its toe in the water of how low it's going to go. And the water's cold, you know. And so <laughs> I, think it's, I think it might be getting, getting ready to, to head back to the upside again. It's just getting that feeling to me, you know, that, that, it's, that it's tested bottoms quite a few times now for quite a long period, you know. And it hasn't really dropped down below, say, 190 the low 190s on the industry and now it's 194 and uh, 194.8 so we have to keep an eye on it let's take a look now at the dow jones industrial average for today and i'm gonna have to refresh the page but it looks like she's up again uh up 149 points at 28,284 and heading up to make new highs new all-time highs that's what the Dow's doing right now. Let's take a look at crude oil. Crude oil is uh, $60.12. And we're going to take a look. We're going to spread this out a little ways. Uh, try to get the chart. Gee, the only thing I can get is a five-day chart, but we see a slow increase in price over the last five days. It looks like it's been creeping upwards ever so slowly. You know, we're getting ready for an inventory build on crude. It's probably going to come early next year. As this crisis starts, I can see an inventory build coming uh, later in coming into the first quarter of 2020. You know, and uh, that could affect price and not in a positive way you know the economies are starting to slow down across the world right now and when the economies slow down we tend to not use quite as much oil now see there's a very set limit of oil we use every day i think it's like 90 billion 90 million barrels a day or something the world uses. the whole world uses if we use ever so slightly less oil then we get an inventory build and the price drops if we use ever so slightly more oil than they're providing, then the, then the price goes up. And, and it's very sensitive. It's ultra sensitive to that, oil is. And it's, why the, it's the only commodity I can think of that's so sensitive that way. Let's take a look at U.S. Treasuries. And what we're looking at is uh, rising yields on the Treasuries not super big it's not super big it's about four basis points uh, in around the longer end of the yield curve five year and seven year and about three basis points on the 30 year we're looking at 2.28 on the 30 year 1.85 on the 10 year 1.79 on the seven year this is the long end of the yield curve and we're actually the whole yield curve today we're seeing rising bond yields let's see if that trend will continue but uh you guys if you watched my show last night you uh seen the reason why we could get a sell-off in bonds 
you know, these banks have stocked up on bonds, and this is what's driven the yields down really low, but now they've run, run out of cash. And this is why they stop lending, you know. Uh, well, okay, that's me speculating on what's going on. I'm not absolutely sure because they're not being transparent in the repo market, what they're doing. They're not being transparent, you know. And so we're having to figure it out. We're having to sit down and try to figure it out. And anything we try to figure out is speculation at this point because they're not being transparent. They're not telling what banks they're going to lend it to. I think they said two years. They're not going to tell. <laughs> in other words, we're not going to tell. Ah. Okay, now let's take a look at the dollar. Now this is what's going to affect the price of gold and silver today. Is this dollar index? You know, the dollar is only strong because there's no place else for them to go. It's the only game in town, really, right now at this moment. And so that's why they that's why the dollar can stay strong, even with its undermoorings and its underpinnings taken away as the world reserve currency and as the petrodollar. It's being eroded. That's being eroded away. And still it stays strong because it's the only real game in town, according to investors. Uh, they look at other things. They look at things like they don't even want to say Bitcoin, you know, could be a competitor to the dollar. They don't even want to say that. It's like taboo to say that right now. But Bitcoin's there, and it, and then they talk about the yuan. Could the yuan replace the No, no, nah, the yuan will never replace the dollar. You kidding me? Well, that's true. I don't see the yuan ever replacing the dollar. Uh, that's the Chinese currency, by the way. So what else is out there? There's no real comp competition. The dollar is the... the the uh, sweetest horse at the glue factory, you know. <laughs> anyway, so this is what's going on today in financials. You guys have a great day. Give me a thumbs up, and we'll catch you guys in the next show. Bye-bye.